So today I'm going to title this because Jesus is alive. Say it with me. Because Jesus is alive. Let's turn to this scripture and it's in Luke 24 verse 5 and 6. And some women went to visit Jesus' tomb when he died. And when they got there, they were surprised. The, the tombstone was removed and there were two angels there. And they spoke to these ladies, and this is what they said. Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Now, this is a big deal. Because Jesus is alive, this is the reality. He can help you with your real problems. You need real power. To help you deal with your real problems. Because Jesus is alive. You can have a relationship with him. And know him for yourself. But I want to focus on the third reason. Of why it's important to know why Jesus is alive. And we're really going to dive into this. Because Jesus is alive. He can give us eternal life. Say with me, eternal life. I'm going to give you four truths about eternal life that will change your life forever. We need to understand what eternal life, if he's coming to give it to us, I want to know what is it? But the first truth, let's talk about the first truth. The first truth is God wants us to have eternal life. In John 3, 16, it says this. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten son so that whoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish but have eternal Life. This scripture is saying that God has made a choice for you already. He wants you and I to have eternal life. He does not want us to perish. In this portion of scripture, it's saying there's two options. Eternal life or perish. And that word perish means... To ruin your life, to destroy your life, to live a miserable life. It means to be lost. Well, God is saying, I don't want you to be lost. I don't want you to ruin your life. I don't want you to destroy your life. I want you to have eternal life. Now, when I think about eternal life, I think we all think the same. That God is actually saying, I want to give you an extension of life. I want to give you eternal existence. But Jesus did not come to give us eternal existence. I want you to get this. You will live eternally no matter what. I, I believe this because I, we do funerals all the time and this is what everybody says. They're in a better place. Why do we always say they're in a better place? I've never done a funeral where everybody says, it's done, it's over. Because there's a sense of eternity in every single one of us. We know this, that this life on earth is just the beginning. And we have a sense within us that there's more to life than the temporary time we're here on this earth. So Jesus did not come to give you quantity. He, gave, he came to give you quality. Someone say quality. Now what we're going to do is describe what eternal life is. Eternal life, I have to look at the word life. And I looked up the word life. And some of you don't know this, but the New Testament that we got the scripture from was written in Greek. And the reason it was written in Greek, because the Greek language 
is the most precise language in the world. So like for us in English, like we say, man, that thing's bad. You mean bad good or bad bad? We'll say, man, that thing is sick. Sick good or sick bad? Like some of our words are confusing. They could actually mean the complete opposite. But in the Greek, the words are precise. So when it says that Jesus came to give us or he wants us to have eternal life, this is what it means. I want you to have eternal Zoe. Say it with me, Zoe. So I want you to have Zoe forever. So I want to know what Zoe is. I'll tell you what it is. It's absolute fullness of life. Absolute fullness of life. You know what's the opposite of having absolute fullness of life? It's having absolute emptiness of life. And if we're honest, we're born with a desire to fill something within our hearts. We're constantly searching for something that will fulfill us or someone that will make us whole. We're always trying to escape our reality because our reality without Jesus is empty. It's not fulfilling. There's something missing. And that's why as a society, we go from one relationship to the other relationship because we're saying, you didn't fulfill me. Next. That drug didn't fulfill me. Next. That's why they have entry drugs. Because you always go to something else because you're trying to find fulfillment or you're trying to find Zoe in a thing, in a person. Okay. Maybe if I make enough money, there's people in this room that have a lot of money. But without Christ, you still have a lot of emptiness. You're still lacking meaning. Your relationships are still falling apart. And your kids are cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And tricks are for kids, for you guys. <laughs> no one makes enough money. No one can take enough drugs. No one can sleep with enough women or sleep with enough men. No one can watch enough porn. No one can climb the ladder enough. There's always more. I'm missing something in my life. And I thought if I got there, I'd be happy. If I got there, I'd be content. But I'm finding out I'm more empty now. And that's why we have famous people that have millions of dollars living in 10,000 10, square foot homes that are hanging themselves. They have the Ferrari. They married the person on the cover of People magazine. But yet, why would they want to kill themselves? What's going on? This is the reason. They climb the ladder of life. Everything that the world has to offer. And they found, I'm still not fulfilled. I'm still empty. And what they need is what we need. We don't need a quantity of life. We need a quality of life. What we need is Zoe. Now, Zoe also means this. It means an absolute fullness of life which belongs to God. Who gives this life? It's called the blessed life. It's called the abundant life. It's also described as a life devoted to God. So I would say this, eternal life equals fullness of life, fullness of peace, joy, freedom, hope, healthy relationships, power, victory. Think about that. If you want more peace, 
You want more joy. You want to have some health in your relationships. You want victory over the things that you're facing. I have an answer for you. You can have eternal life. God wants you to have eternal life. And now the next truth I want to give you is this. Very simple truth. Eternal life. Jesus is the only source of eternal life. Say it with me. Jesus is the only source of what? So where do I find this life? You find it in Jesus. Look at the scripture. It says this in 1 John 5, 11 and 2. 12, I mean. It says this. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. Who's given us eternal Zoe? God. And this life is in his son. This life is not in a religion. This life is not in a thing. This life is not in a possession. This life is in a person. And his name is Jesus. And look what it goes on to say. The one who has the son has this eternal life. And the one who does not have the son of God does not have this eternal life. I talk to people all the time. They say, I don't understand what the Bible's saying. Just read it. <laughs> Look what it says. He who has Jesus has this quality of life. He who does not have Jesus does not have this quality of life. And if you don't have this quality of life, you are searching for it. There was an old country song, looking for love in all the wrong places. You've been looking for Zoe in all the wrong places. Some of us today, you need to stop going where you've been going because where you've been going has left you empty. Where you've been going has destroyed your life. Where you've been going has caused major loss in your integrity, in your honor, in your family, in your dreams, in your emotions. When is it going to stop? You're searching. That's why I'm not offering your religion. Because eternal life is not found in a religion. It's found in Jesus. We need to get over our religious titles. Why? We need to get even over, be careful. We need to get over our church titles sometimes. What church you go to? I go to Wayward Irish. What church you go to? I go to, I go to Calvary Chapel and Ikevato. Uh, like, what's up, homie? My pastor's Jack Hiz. My pastor Mark Garcia. I've been my pastor because I'll teach your pastor. Stop it. <laughs> you know what could be crazy? Is you're caught up. I'm a Catholic. I'm a Jehovah Witness. I'm a Mormon. I'm a this. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Pentecostal. Get caught up in all those titles and lose your soul. Because eternal life is not found in a religion. Eternal life is found in a person, and his name is Jesus Christ. Let's get it in you. And if you have Jesus, you have eternal life. And if you don't have Jesus, you don't have eternal life. Eternal life is not in success either. If I just get this level of success, that'll be it. Yeah, right. How many trophies can you get? Has anybody ever got a trophy in here? I got some trophies in my garage. I don't know why I'm keeping them. I was 10 years old. <laughs> I haven't done much since 10 years old so to get a trophy. But you know what your trophy represents? Past accomplishments has nothing to do with your future, has nothing to do with your worth, it has nothing to do with your fulfillment. And the truth is, those trophies end up being in the garage, and most of them, most of us end up throwing them away. You know, I'm just saying all this because I want you to get back to the core of why you were created. God created you, and He wants you to give you give you a life 
that's fulfilling, that's whole, that's complete, and you can have it today. Stop searching. The search stops right here. There's an offer being made. Do you want the life he off he's offering? Because you can have it. You don't have to earn it. You can have it free today. But he who has a son has eternal life. He who does not have the son does not have eternal life. You know what that means? There's people in here that, that have the son. You have Jesus in you. And there's other people that don't have the son. You might only have religion in you. Check this out. Well, pastor, I don't know if I have the son. You don't have the son. If you don't know if you have the son in you, you don't have the son. It's kind of simple like this. Did you eat the Big Mac or didn't you? I don't know. No, it's not there anymore. You ate it. Stop it. I did. I ate it. Because to have the son, I want you to, is to have the creator of the universe empowering and living and not in you. And if he's in you, your life will never be the same again. Because he doesn't come in name alone. He comes with his spirit. He comes with his power. And he comes with new life. You bring your empty vessel and he fills it with his power. He fills it with his love. He fills it with his victory. He fills it with his peace and his joy. You can have it. What do you come with? Your empty vessel. And he fills it. You don't fix yourself and come to God. You come empty. He fills you. Is that good news? So truth number one was simple. God wants us to have eternal life. Truth number two, Jesus is the only source of eternal life. Those that have Jesus have eternal life. Truth number three, only two options, eternal life or eternal punishment. Think about this. Your life is unending no matter what. I feel so depressed. I want to kill myself. You can't kill yourself because your soul never dies. To kill yourself is only doing this, eliminating you from the temporal realm and puts you into the eternal realm where you can't return. You're going to live forever, eternal life, eternal Zoe, or the other word is eternal. It's another Greek word, Colossus. Say it with me, Colossus. Either you're living one existence now and for eternity, or you're living another existence. Either you're experiencing Zoe life or Colossus life. Colossus. Colossus means this, torment. Pain, loss, confinement, misery. I believe someone's telling me, Pastor, you're describing my life now. I'm miserable. I'm confined. I feel trapped. I can't get out. Every year I tell myself, I'm done. I'm done with the addiction. I'm done with the lying. I'm done with the fighting. I'm done with the anger. I'm done with the unforgiveness. I'm done with this dysfunctional cycle. I'm done. But then I find out I'm not done because I can't even keep my own promises. And the reason we can't keep our own promises is only one reason you're trapped. You're confined. You're living a life of colossus, torment, misery, pain. You know what I've learned about life? Either you have a down payment of eternal life, or right now you're experiencing a down payment of colossus. Things are getting worse, or things are moving towards a better place. More peace, more joy, more freedom, or less peace, 
more misery, more torment, more anger, more dysfunction, more, more cycles of, of, of destruction in our families. That something has to change. And I, I got good news for you. You can't change you, but Jesus can. Because he could give you the power, that same Jesus that resurrected from the dead can help you overcome what you can and I can't overcome. Someone say Colossus. Look at Matthew 25, 46. Then these unbelieving people will go away, look at this, into eternal, unending, punishment what will they be punished for their sins their crimes their violence their abuse lies betrayal but Jesus was already punished for every single thing we've done wrong and all we need to do is place our faith in him. And every single wrong thing we've done can be forgiven and removed off our record. And we can receive a new life. Stop living under a guilt trip. Jesus already paid for it. Stop beating yourself up. Jesus was already beat for it. But the scripture says, then these unbelieving will go into eternal, look at this, unending punishment but those who are righteous and in right standing with God will go by his remarkable grace I mean it's not, nothing you earned into eternal unending Zoe eternal unending peace eternal unending joy eternal unending victory eternal unending progress eternal unending come on power it's eternal unending there's fulfillment satisfaction you can have it there is two sides to eternity remember you're going to live forever either eternal life zoe or eternal colossus. And you might be even saying something like this, Pastor, I don't know about all that, but I'm enjoying life right now without Jesus. Okay, I'm going to give you an example of where you're at. Two people just jumped out of a parachute. I mean, a parachute. <laughs> they jumped out of a plane, then they jumped out of a parachute. That'd be kind of crazy. Boop! Nope, I jumped out of a parachute. <laughs> I had it, but it's gone. No, you jumped out of a plane. Don't be deceived by temporary pleasure to think you're okay just because I'm doing good. I don't need God. I'm doing good. I'm self-made. Stop it. You're outside of a plane with no parachute. And this is the idea. This is the deception of it. The person with the parachute and the person without the parachute are enjoying a free fall. I love it. Ah. The big difference between the person that has a parachute and the person that doesn't, doesn't have a parachute is the end. Without a parachute, your life will end in a splat. And be careful that you're not going from one splat to another splat, to another splat, and thinking God's giving you chance after chance after chance. It hasn't worked, but you're still ready to jump out again into your pleasure, and there's a problem. It's going to end in splat again. But this is the scary part. There will be a final splat for you. And if you miss this point, and you don't receive Jesus, and we don't receive eternal life, you have made a choice to be under not only the temporary misery and torment and emptiness you're in now, but you'll have it forever. Two eternal experiences. Totally different results. You choose what you have breath in your lungs, what kind of quality life you'll live here, and where you'll spend eternity. And we'll end it with truth number four. 
Eternal life is a gift that is received. I love this. Say it with me. It's a gift. You know what that means? You can't earn it. It's free. It's received by believing and accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior. It's received by believing, say it, and accepting. Say it with me. Believing and? You say, well, why, why believe and accept? Because don't be deceived into thinking that you have eternal life just because you believe that Jesus exists. Well, I believe he exists and I believe he's Lord. The devil believes that too. But he's not saved. There has to be a day that you believe and accept Jesus' leadership over your life and say, I'm done directing my life. Jesus, take over my life. Give me eternal life. Give me eternal Zoe. I'm tired of living this colossus mess with colossal failure that leads to eternal colossus. John 3, 36 is the last verse. He, look at this, or she, who believes and trusts in the Son, Jesus, and accepts him as Savior. I can't save me. Save me. Has eternal life. That is, already possesses it. Eternal life is not in heaven. I get it right now. I possess it right now. I got power over demons right now. I have victory over every situation I'm facing right now. I get healing right now. I get joy right now. I get restoration right now. I get results right now. Zoe, now. Because I think we've done a disservice. And even the church is like, I love to get to heaven so I could have peace. Maybe you don't know you already possess it. So that way you don't, and that's why you're not enjoying it. But whoever believes and accepts the son, trust, believes and accepts the son, has eternal life now. Someone say quality of life. Now. But look at this. But don't be on the wrong side of the scripture. Don't be on the wrong side of this but. I know that probably sounds wrong, but I'm just telling you right here. <laughs> but he who does not believe the Son and chooses to reject him, disobeying him and denying him as Savior, will not see eternal life, but instead the wrath of God hangs over him continually. Colossus is over that person continually. The emptiness is there continually. The lack of fulfillment, the anger, the, the rejection, the abuse, the torment, the sleeplessness nights are there continually. But I got good news. There's a Jesus that died for your Colossus, conquered your Colossus to give you Zoe. And if you believe and trust and accept it, you can have it. Wow. You know what that means? You choose your eternal existence. You choose what kind of life you're going to live. And you choose right now. I'm going to end it with this story. There was a man named Carl and Carl was the richest man in the valley. He owned thousands of acres where he lived. He had so much land and he was so rich that he would lease out his land to poor farmers so they could make a meager living. And what Carl loved to do was ride his horse on his land and just brag 
about what he's accomplished and how rich he was. And he would enjoy that, flaunting his wealth. One day as he's riding his horse, he saw in a little distance a man that was setting up his lunch. He put on a little table, setting up his lunch underneath one of his trees on his property. And as he got close, he realized it was Sam, one of the farmers that he leased some of his land to. So he gets a little closer and he sees Sam laid out. And then Sam bows his head. And as, he, as Carl gets close, he wants to hear what Sam is saying. And he overhears the prayer. And Sam is giving thanks to God for his meal. After he's done, he says, amen. Then Carl on his high horse says this, Sam, you're giving thanks for that meal? A little bread, toast, and cheese? If all I had was bread and cheese, I wouldn't give thanks to God for that. You're giving thanks for God for nothing. And then Sam answered, he says, with God, this bread and cheese is fulfilling. And I'm so grateful for the little bread and cheese I have today. Now, Carl, the rich man says, stop it. It's nonsense. So he starts taking off on his horse. And then the Sam says, Sam, Carl, excuse me, sir. Has come. You know, I had a dream that the richest man in the valley was going to die within 24 hours. And Carl says, I'm the richest man in the valley. I'm going to die in 24 hours. So as he's riding away, he, just, wait, he, he, he hears Carl, Sam, he's, shut up. And he rides away, but he can't let that go. Little by little, his heart starts hurting. He's getting pains in his chest. And he starts thinking, I'm the richest man in the valley. I'm the guy. Maybe I'm the one that's going to die within his 20. Maybe he's right. So he gallops home as fast as he can. And he calls the doctor to his house. He has a personal doctor. Doc, come over. I need my heart checked. I have pain in my chest. So the doctor comes out. He checks his blood. He checks his heartbeat. He checks everything. And he says, Carl, you're 100% fine. You're going to live for years. You're good. He goes, I'm sorry. It's just I talked to some guy, Sam, out there, and he told me the richest man in the valley was going to die, and I'm the richest man in the valley. I'm sorry for wasting your time. I just got over, I just I, I overreacted. I'm sorry. He goes, okay, you good. Go to bed. So Carl goes to bed that night, and as Carl goes to bed that night, he sleeps fine. But early in the morning, Someone knocks on his door. And he says, yes. And he said, the messenger said, old man Sam died. And you know what Carl realized? He wasn't the richest man in the valley. Old man Sam was the richest man in the valley. And why was he the richest man in the valley? Because he had Zoe life. And I'm going to ask you, are you the one on the horse that's trying to get gained the whole world, but yet your soul is lost and you're empty and you're under Colossus? Or are you, Sam, with little bread and little cheese, but you're fulfilled because you have a relationship with Jesus? Today we're going to determine where we're at and you have a choice. And I pray that you choose not to reject, but to believe and receive the life that God is offering you. Let's all stand up. Is God good? I'm going to dismiss in just a second. But before we dismiss, remember I told you that once you learn something, learning something without action produces no change? There has to be a time where I finally take action. And be careful with a mindset of procrastination. Be careful 
that you put off for tomorrow what you should be doing today. Herman didn't realize he had five days left. He came here, came up here, gave his life to Jesus, and five days he went into eternity. Some of his family is here right now. We're so glad that you're here. And, if you, and I want the whole family to see Herman again. I already know where Herman's at. Herman is experiencing non-ending Zoe. But understand this. There's two different eternal experiences. And those who are under eternal Colossus will never see those who are living eternal Zoe. And once you leave this earth, you've made your choice. Be careful that you're not getting the habit of resisting what you should be accepting. Because once you get in a habit of resisting what you should be accepting, I want you to get this, your heart can get hard and full of unbelief. Use the little faith that you have today and believe in Jesus, trust Him as your Savior, and accept Him and the life He's offering you. This place is full. We have overflow. We had 2,000 people show up to our 6 o'clock service this morning. People are giving their lives to Jesus. And I could spend from here to another 100 years with people in this room telling you stories of how their lives have been transformed by accepting Jesus as their Savior. I'm not offering you religion. I'm offering you a new life. And it's found in Jesus. Today's your day. When I count to three, you're saying, Pastor, you asked me a question earlier. Do I have Jesus? And I said, I don't know. Well, don't stay in the I don't know stage. No. You can receive him right now. You can receive him right now. You know who your greatest enemy is? It's not the devil. It's you. The thoughts in your head. Not now. I'm going to be embarrassed. What are people going to think? When you stand before God one day, it doesn't matter what people think. As a matter of fact, most of you don't care what people think anyways. Don't mess up your eternal life by worrying about somebody that has nothing to do with your future. Today's your day. It takes a real man and woman to say, I want to give my life to Jesus. First service, we had a whole bunch of people. Second service, a whole bunch of people giving their lives to Jesus. Hundreds of people are giving their lives to Jesus. I pray that this is your day too. Or maybe there's somebody here that you gave your life to Jesus, but you backslid. And it's time for you to come back and surrender. Your, you backslid into the colossal mess that God set you free from. And it's, come, it's time to come back to the Zoe life that God has for you. When I count to three, say, Pastor, that's me. I want to receive Jesus. I want a new life. I want to be saved. I want Zoe life today. I want forgiveness of my sins. I want a new start, a new life today. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. I want to recommit my life to the Lord. When I, when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. Jesus did it publicly for you. I'm not even asking anybody to bow your heads, close your eyes, because I believe that if you can't do this publicly, live right now, publicly raise your hand. You're never going to live it out there. It's time to just say, I, I represent. I'm living my, I'm giving my life to Jesus. I'm done with my old way of living. I'm ready for a new life. When I count three, I want you to raise your hands. One, moment of truth. Accept them. Two, when I say three, just raise your hand really quick. Don't hesitate. Give your life to Jesus. Accept him as you say. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see all those hands over there. I see the hand over there. I see the proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Right over there. Right over there. Anybody? I see those hands over there. Come on. Right now there's somebody that you should be raising your hand and you're like fighting within yourself. Come on. Break through and just raise your hand. Today's your day. I want those that raise their hands to do me a big favor. I want you to give me the honor and privilege of praying with you. I want to pray with you. So if you raise your hand, I want you to take one more step. I want you to leave your seat. And I want you to come up real quick. Just come up here to the front. If you raise your hand, take your next step of action. Without taking the next step of action, nothing's going to change. 
Just come forward. Today's your day. You come with your pain. You come with your emptiness. You come with your depression. You come with your addiction. You come with, come with your fears. Just come. Come on, church. Just give them a hand. Ask your neighbor. If you want to go up there, I'll go up there with you. If you want to go up there, I'll go up there with you. Come on, church. Just give the Lord. Jesus, help me. Save me. I want a new life. I remember some years back, I did a funeral for one of the gangsters in our city. He got in a shootout. He got shot 10 times. And his name was G on 10th Street. And no pastor wanted to do that funeral because it was a gang funeral. And they were fearing violence would break out. And I said, I'll do it. Now, I, I said I'm going to do it because I already got Zoe life. They don't. Pastor, you could die. I don't care. I don't die. Christians don't die. We just multiply. We don't die. I just go from here to... And if I died going on the streets, you guys would be even more crazy. I'll die too. But I remember at that funeral, I remember there was a boldness that came over me. And I remember hitting G's casket like, bam! Guys, it's time for us to change. And not only change for you, but let's change for the little homies and the little kids in the hood. Because you're going to pass on your gangster life to them. And we don't want to bury your kids right here. Because all you're doing is passing on your colossus life to them. There has to be a time where someone is man enough and woman enough to say, I'm done passing on all this dysfunction to them. And I want to be a man, an example, a woman that could give them a life that matters. This, this life is not for wimps. This life is for warriors. Because we're living a life against the grain. But I'll tell you this, we're right. And we have victory. It's good. It's better, it gets better too. Every day, you can have it. We're gonna pray. You're gonna give your life to Jesus. Say it with me, I'm gonna give my life to Jesus. Your next step after you, I'm gonna pray with you, but after that is to get baptized. You know what baptism represents? I'm done with my old life. Colossus, done. And I'm living a new life. I'm living for Jesus. So, Pastor, what kind of, is it kind of like being jumped into the gang? Kind of. <laughs> it kind of, kind of like that. <laughs> that means I'm in. I'm not, I'm so in. I want everybody to know I'm done with my old life. I'm living for Jesus. Okay. God loves you. And you're coming out of water. I really believe you're going to get filled with God's spirit greater than you ever have. And I believe this. God's going to empower you to live a life that you never thought you could live. And accomplish things you never thought you could accomplish. You can do it. And you know what? You know why you're going to do it? Because God's going to help you. But you know also this? We're together in this. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be here in San Bernardino till I die. So you know where to find Pastor Marco. Right here. I'm not saying that we won't start church in other cities, but I'm going to still be here. 
we love you. Let's do this together. Are you ready to surrender your life to Jesus? Now, if you say, I'm ready to get baptized, but that's your next step. First step of obedience after giving your life to Jesus is get baptized. If you sign up for baptism, we're going to give you a t-shirt. And next week, Sunday, we're going to baptize you. We're not wasting no time. We're going to baptize you. You're going to, bring, you're going to wear this in the water. So we're going to give you a t-shirt. We're wearing the water, and we're going to go from there. Next Sunday, we're going to start a relationship series. You want to come here and learn how to do relationships. Let's start getting into school so we start getting some new results. How many want some new results in your life? Wednesday night, just like you used to go to the clubs every weekend, come to church. This is your new club right here. Wednesday night, party. Holy Ghost party, don't stop. Sunday morning, party. This is good, all right? Let's pray. Bow your heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I realize that I'm a sinner. I've done life my way, and I'm tired. I'm wore out of this Colossus life. Save me. Forgive me. I believe you paid the price for all the wrong I've done. You were punished, so I wouldn't have to be punished. I receive my new life, my Zoe life right now. From this day forward, I'm going to live for you forever and ever. I'm saved. I'm forgiven. I'm a new person. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Come on, church. Let's celebrate.